church today. We are here, so thanks be to God. Uh, it is a special service, if, if you haven't noticed, there's something blocking the communion rail. Uh, so we are not having communion today. And a uh, little teaching to go along with this day. Uh, normally, when we have communion, we call that service divine service because uh, we see that God comes to us with his divine gifts of, of word and sacraments, of, of uh, communion. He brings himself to us, gives us his body and blood, and that is given. So this divine service is him giving himself to us in that specific way. So it just doesn't make sense to have a communion service when you're not having communion. So we are going to do what we used to do in the old days, which is the, the service of matins. That's found on page 219. And for you uh, a little bit of older guys and gals, sing out. I will help you. I'm going to sing the whole thing with you. Uh, and we will go back and forth like we normally would. Uh, but I will give you something on the Venite and the Tadeum. It, uh, it goes in order. One, two, three, four. But number four starts halfway through the, 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 the hymns. So just keep an eye out on when the, where those numbers are. And they go right in order and, and it will be good. And then we will be also uh, speaking together whole verse by whole verse Psalm 65. We're not going to chant that this day. But this service is more of a, this is not a divine service because we're not having communion, but this is the word of God just being showered over us. So we hear it in the sermon, in the hymns, and in the preaching, and in the, uh, and in the liturgy. So listen to the, the songs as well as you, as, you, as you are participating in the word. Because the songs have a lot of depth in them, a lot of depth for you. All right, with that, we will have the ringing of our bells and the greeting, because the hymn comes a little later. So let us rise and greet one another with the peace of God. And then we'll have the ringing of the bells. You can remain standing because I, I'm going to just tell you to stand. So unless you want to do that whole work again. Make a joyful noise to the rock of our 
Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You may be seated for the reading of the psalm. Psalm 65 in the front of your hymnal, Psalm 65. No, we're just, we're just reading it. Whole verse by whole verse. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayers, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. Keep going. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds your an you answer us with righteousness, O God, of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. The one who by his strength establishes the mountains, being girded with might. Who sits, who stills the roaring of the sea, the roaring of the waves, the tumult of the peoples. So that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its grows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening its showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your, with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks, and the valleys deck themselves with grain, and they shout and sing together for joy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And we continue now with the office hymn, hymn 940.
congregation be seat, can be seated for our readings for today. Our first reading for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost is taken from Isaiah chapter 55, beginning at verse 10. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 12. And Paul writes, So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we might also be glorified with him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We rise for the gospel. A reading from the gospel of Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse 1. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them out. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower, Jesus says. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away that which has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundred, in another sixty, and in another thirty. O Lord, have mercy on us. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those 
those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitations of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitations of your house and the place where your glory dwells. The congregation may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn 577. text for today's sermon is taken from our gospel reading in Matthew, and the sermon is entitled, The Sower Knows. What kind of soil is your life? I'm going to let you ponder that for a moment, right? What kind of soil is your life? This parable might... Maybe the better word is ought to ask ourselves, to help us to ask ourselves that very question. The story of the sower obviously makes us think of these questions of what kind of soil am I? The the text spends a lot of time with the soil, talking about bad soil choked with stones and thorns where the seed really goes nowhere and changes nothing. But then we also have the good soil, where the seed of God is sown, and the Word puts down roots, deep roots, and it grows, and it matures, and it bears much fruit. Therefore, the question is, what is happening with the seed of God's Word in your life? When you listen to the sermon today, I read the Bible, Is the Word of God sinking in? I hope so. I hope it is. Are you truly listening to God and understanding what He is saying to you so that your life is bearing fruit? We know the answer isn't always that it is. We know the answer isn't always it should be. And maybe it's not even at this very moment. Maybe you're not even listening to me today. 
But there's comfort in our text. There's comfort in our text because even though our sinful hearts are, are often unready, no, unwilling, unwilling to believe Christ's word, unwilling to let it bear fruit in our lives, unwilling to be participants in the gift of God, all of them, God continues to give them nonetheless. And he will keep giving it to you this morning as well. Maybe like me, you are too easily to recognize what soil you are. Maybe it's too easy for you to recognize what Jesus says about you in this parable from your own daily life. The hard, trodden down path where the seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ is sown. And then it bounces off and it is scattered elsewhere. Jesus says this is what happens when we don't understand the word of God. We just don't get it. We don't want to get it because that means something has to change in us. We hear the gospel of grace, but it makes very little impression on us. And we want to keep breaking the commandments and do all the stuff that God says not to do. So we don't look to repentance and faith. We don't look to turning away from our sin. And we have no care for God and his word. That's what that path looks like. Then there is stony ground. The reception of the word on stony ground. We hear it. And it germinates. Oh, isn't it so great to see germination happen? It germinates and we understand and we grasp the gospel message of forgiveness and life in Christ. And indeed, it brings us great joy, immense joy for a time. But it doesn't root in. It doesn't go deep. Because we don't allow the word of truth, of God's word of truth, to shape our lives, to shape our hearts, to shape our consciences, nor to change our priorities or our underlying values. What the world is an underlying value? Think about that someday. The, the world keeps telling you you have underlying values. What are they? We like the flash of excitement. No, no, we're not like that. We like the flash of excitement. Right? We want all that things that excite us. We want to become a Christian because, holy cow, I got my sins forgiven, and it's so exciting. But when it comes time to study day in and day out, when the years go on, and the study goes on, and the prayers kind of go on, and the study goes kind of on, and, and then the years of being with all the fellow sinners here in this church together goes on when our faith meets the challenges and changes of life and it gets difficult with sickness and maybe even death. It swallows up the dry root and it withers. And then we turn to ungodly solutions for our life. Then there is the thorns and thistles of the soil. We may hear and we may understand what God says to us. It may take root and it may even take root pretty deeply. But then the competition. Oh, you know how we like competition. But the competition is against you. The competition is for the space of your soil. And it is strong, oftentimes too strong. Our worries about having the American dream. That's what we want. We don't want God's dream. We want the American dream. The good life. Our desires for wealth and property. We want all the things of this world. We have an unhealthy desire for all the good things of this world so that it might make our lives easy. Who wants easy? You're not going to get it. You're not going to get it because of this sin-broken world is against you. The desires of our lives, all the activities that we cram into this life to make us happy, to make our children 
I'm going to throw the air quotes at you like that. To make our children happy. Then there's the eternal security that we want. Or the earthly security. We don't want nobody breaking into our houses. We want good health. We want it all. And we go chasing after it with a vengeance. And all those things crowd out the word. And choke it. So it is unfruitful. And dies. Jesus' word is part of the parable. (laughs) <laughs> and it's very telling because they tell us this word tells us of our own spiritual dehydration our own lack we see it they show us our spiritual hardness our slowness to hear you know hardness the word bounces off of us we don't want to hear we plug our ears let us not fool ourselves a lot of time is spent in this area in the weeds choking us out although Jesus talks a lot about the soil in our parable there's a lot of talk there right man did that just hurt I hope it hurt it hurt me when I was reading it he talks a lot about the soil in our parable we would do well to recognize it is often the way of his parables that we actually miss the main point That is a good point. All those things are good. But what is the center of the story? Is it not what first takes our attention? No. So let's look again at what the point of the story is. Let's take a closer look, not at the soil, but at the sower and his work. He seems to knowingly throw this seed to every corner of his Field. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He takes his precious soil, throws it on the, the path, he throws it on the rocky, he throws it on the weeds, and he even throws it on the good soil. This precious soil. He holds nothing back. Nothing. He spreads it so generously. Obviously, people do intend to ignore the, the gospel message. We do intend to do that. You know that so many reject the gospel today. Even his own people are inconsistent. They're unfruitful hearers of it. And yet Christ still died for all, including those who reject him. All the sins of the whole world have been forgiven. Heaven is opened up to all. Therefore the sower still sows. He still sows his gospel of salvation and goes on sowing even on the path and every other place. Even in the church with all of its problems, he keeps sowing. Even in the world with all of its problems, he keeps sowing. And he does this by the power of the Holy Spirit. But not mystically, per se, because he has given you his Holy Spirit. Therefore, you are ambassadors for Christ. And if you're ambassadors, we're going to change that word from ambassadors. That's one who speaks for somebody else. You are actually sowers. You become the sowers to cast out the gospel message to all those places. Does he tell you not to cast it on the path? I'm pretty sure he doesn't. Does he tell you not to cast it on the rocks or the weeds? Why does he tell you to cast it on the rocks and the weeds as well as the good soil? Because only Christ can change the soil. Only Christ, through repentance and forgiveness, through his death and resurrection, can change your stony, rocky pathway into the life that God has intended, into fertile ground. And the miracle is this, that is despite all the stones and the thorns and the hardness of your human heart, some of the soil and land still grows good good growth. He is not sparing. He's growing it 30, 60, and 100 fold. Yes, even with me, 
this rocky soil, and with you, the weed-infested soils. The sower knows his land. The sower gives his seed. Period. On the day of your baptism, you were baptized into Jesus' death. The sower planted the seed of life eternal in you. And in his grace and mercy and in the power of the Holy Spirit, that sown seed was put down deep into your heart that it might grow and produce faith and hope and love in our triune God and love for our neighbor. And day by day, Sunday by Sunday, home devotion by home devotion, prayer after prayer, the same life-giving seed is sown in our lives. Every day, every Sunday, the word and sacrament is sown into our life that we might have forgiveness and salvation through Jesus Christ, that the gospel seed that changes even a rocky heart and soil will change us. If you doubt this, then just pay attention to what's happening in our service. Listen to the words of the liturgy. Listen to the sermon, hopefully. We hear of our sins. We hear and confess to God and receive the forgiveness of our sins. Christ, the true sower of the gospel, continues to come to us with forgiveness and life in his name. And today and every time we hear the word, every time, the sower is sowing his seed in you. Every time you hear the word, you grasp that. So if you're not hearing the word, it's not because Jesus isn't doing his work. Look around you. I mean it. I can tell that you're not. Look around you. God has sown his seed here. God continues to sow his seed here. See the word of God being sown around you. Sown in Sunday school, sown in Bible studies, sown in all the adult and youth baptisms, all the adult and youth confirmations. And it's being sown into our communities through our upcoming VBS, through our preschool, through the other outreach endeavors that we have. It's being sown all over the world through missionaries, through pastors, through church workers, through parents, through parents, through parents and children. And it is producing its increase. Even if we fail to see it here, Even if you fail to see it, it is producing its increase. That's what God says it's going to do. So welcome. So welcome and hear the word. He who has ears, let him hear. Receive the gospel gladly. Believe in the forgiveness of your sins there at the cross of Christ. And believe the words and works of Jesus Christ in your life. And the seed will grow in you. Trust the word. Even when it seems to fail, it will still produce what God intends it to produce. It is going to do its work. You may not like it, but it's going to do its work. The sower knows his work. God is doing things that you don't even know about. Even though your life and your lives are in disorder, God can still bring about his fruitful works in your life through that word and sacrament, through his seed. So speak the word. Jesus explained his parables to his disciples, just as he has explained it to you today. This is so that you can speak the word clearly to others. This is the great assurance that we have, the great encouragement for preachers, the great encouragement for Christians who speak the gospel to others. 
Do I need to tell you again where you need to speak it? I feel like I do because I'm not sure you're listening. Parents to their spouses. Parents to their children, grandchildren, to their friends, to their workers, to the citizens of our community. There's some sowing that God has intended for us to do. So may we ever sow the seed that has been so preciously sown in us to produce not more pews, not more butts in the pews. I don't care about butts in the pews. I care about people knowing their salvation. You should care about people knowing their salvation for the glory of God and not yourself, for the glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and not us, but for our eternal hope. May it always be so. Amen. We rise, turning now to page 223, where we together sing the Te Deum.
You may be seated as we gather our offerings. And I also encourage you to grab the attendance and guest books located in the center aisle and please fill that out. And might I just say a great job on that today. rise now for the Kyrie, found on page 227, and the Lord's Prayer. at this time and I invite our VBS team to come forward for a uh, VBS uh, installation. We can gather in the center at the sides. <laughs> over here a little bit more. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you are to serve this congregation and serve our Lord as VBS team members. Hear what the Holy Scripture says to those who are to serve in the church in this way. Let each one test his own work and then his reason to, be bo to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. And especially to those in the household of faith. May these words resonate with you as you work this week in the VBS classrooms and areas. So now, in the presence of this congregation and in the presence of God, I install you as VBS team members, and I do that in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, visit these new men and women who are working in your kingdom through VBS, 
Visit them with your favor and love. Enlighten their minds with the light of your gospel. Place in their hearts a love of the truth and increase in them true faith. Nourish them with your goodness and of your great mercy keep them in your love that they may faithfully be of service to you and to your people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now go in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of our Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. And may the Almighty Father, no, and may, and may the Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. It gives me great joy to introduce to you God's VBS staff for this day, for this week. And we rise now for the prayers of the church. And in our prayers, we have a couple of additional prayers. Uh, one is for Brian Manhart, who pulled his hamstring. Uh, also for um, Ashlyn's mother. Ashlyn is the uh, mother of, of the young boy that we baptized two weeks ago, AJ. Well, her mother is on life support right now. Some special thing happened that was pretty bad, so we'll keep them in our prayers. Uh, but also for uh, uh, Jeff Boyer's lead person at his work, uh, her husband uh, has cancer, so we're going to pray for that family as well. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father of mercy, our sins have merited thorns and briars and yielded only, only trouble and strife. Forgive our transgressions and discipline us against temptation, that we may rejoice in your name and the promise of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you sent forth your word as abundantly as rains upon the earth. Grant that we would never take your generosity for granted, but would seek the help and refreshment of your word in every circumstance. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, you continue to raise up people in the church to do the work of your kingdom. Bless our outreach and sustain the faith of your people until you come again in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, continue to sow your word through the fields of the earth. Bless pastors, missionaries, as they proclaim your truth. Bless and strengthen our VBS staff and workers as they work this week. Fill them and us with the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ as they share this hope in this dying world. Prepare the hearts of all who hear your gospel to believe and yield abundant fruit. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, bless parents with faithfulness as they plant your word into their children, that they may grow steadfast among the cares and troubles of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Creator of heaven and earth, by your word you sent forth rain and snow to make, to make the world bring forth and sprout. Give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Provide us seasonable weather and a bountiful harvest that we may enjoy daily bread and praise your name. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, look with mercy upon those who suffer from illness of body and mind especially Jeff, the, the husband of Jeff Boyer's lead person. For Bill, Grover, Shirley, Judy, Dottie, Ron, Catherine, Melissa, Dean, Robert, Jennifer, Rob, Judy, Samantha, Taylor, Doug and Doug, Deb, Russ, Connie, Cindy, Adam, Jamie, Ashlyn's mother, and Brian. Lord, in your mercy, Give them healing, comfort them with your presence, grant them patience to endure suffering, and assure them at all times that you are with them and that they are your dear children and that the glory of Christ awaits them. Lord, in your mercy. And turning now to page 228 of our hymnal. 
We continue with the collect of grace for the day. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, our mighty, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless. That's the other one. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
The congregation may be seated for a few announcements, and I look to the congregation to see if there is anything that needs to be brought forward, and I, little birdie told me that Miss Peggy wants to speak. Now we are. Now we are. It was on earlier. Yes. There. We must not have it up very loud. So. It's not on. No. All right. Talk loud. Peggy, thank you for your work. So I don't know if all of you were able to see this periodic table. It's not your normal periodic table, especially if you're a scientist. You knew that probably hours ago. No, oh, that's the uh, that's the biblical. That's the books of the Bible. That's our periodic table as the as the. Uh, followers of God are. This. So keep that in mind. It's a great little thing to see up there. Uh, uh, other announcements that I might have forgot. I do have one or two here, and that is that Ebenezer Lutheran Church's bi uh, vacation Bible study is directly following ours, the week after ours. So if you have kids that still want to participate in hearing the Word of God, that's another place to do it. Uh, so we look forward to that. And also, if you're trying to put a, a letter into the newsletter, or an article in there, please try to get them in early, uh, before the 15th if possible, uh, so that we can get them out early, so that you can have them in your hot little hands earlier. All right, any other announcements that I might have failed to give? Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.